but down just kind of a, a weird meet in the sense that you haven't really <laughs> done much training and you haven't gotten to training camp yet. You know, what, what kind of, what are your expectations going into Friday? Well, the kids have trained. They've just not trained under under our watchful eyes just <laughs> under your yet. your guidance? Yeah, the team, so the team reported on Monday and okay. we've been in practice all of this week. So we worked out yesterday and our next hard workout will be on Friday. Okay. So we haven't seen a whole lot yet, but this will be a good opportunity to let most of our returners compete and really just practice running together and being a group and, and functioning as a unit. Things that are difficult to do when you're in different parts of the country training all summer long. Can you get a good sense of where they're at on Friday? Or do you think you'll be able to get a good I sense of where we'll they're at? I think we'll begin to. We'll begin to see where they're at. We'll let them run. We'll let them run pretty hard. We'll run a fairly controlled effort in the sense that we do want them to try to run as a pack and work together as much as they can at this point in the season. Uh, but we're training hard right now. The, the women are running, you know, some of them upwards of 70 or 80 miles a week. You know, the load is high. The load is heavy. So this is a good chance to really practice competing. But certainly nobody's fresh and nobody's you know, really peaking for this one. But it'll still be a good chance to watch them compete and kind of get those competitive juices flowing again. You don't hear often about, you know, wanting to practice competing, but how important is that early in the year to kind of get essentially a, a practice competition in? I think it's really important. I think it's important to just get out there and really get your mindset kind of functioning that way. Uh, be, wake up in the morning and know there's a race this afternoon and, and prepare that way, eat the right things, you know, get back on the track of warming up at the right time and really just doing the things that you need to do to, to set yourself up to perform well that really no one's practiced since you know the NCAA outdoor meet. So to, to be able to do that I think will be an important first step for us uh, and really just to, to go out there and practice looking at the body in front of you and figuring out a way to get to the finish line before she does. The women's team brings a lot back this year. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on, on, on how good this team can be? Well, we've got a lot of interesting pieces, that's for sure. We really return just about everybody, and we've brought some good newcomers in. Uh, we've got a lot more experience than we did last year. It's a little early to tell you how well I think we can do, but I think we've got a pretty uh, improved squad from last year. And I think everybody really, from top to bottom, improved this outdoor season from the past. So we're, we're excited. Sarah Baxter back, and she's, she's entered in the meet, so obviously she's healthy enough to compete. Yes, Are you yes, excited sir. to kind of just see what she can, can do out there? Yeah, yeah. So Sarah is, uh, she's healthy and she's training and she'll get she'll get a race under her belt this weekend, but we're really looking big picture with her and I think it'll be the first step in the direction of, of having a really good fall. And Molly and Waverly, are, are they kind of the leaders of this team? I would say that's probably true um, in terms of just their, they've been around the block here for a while mm -hmm. and they had some outstanding performances outdoors and are, are pretty seasoned that way. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, they're probably the, the leaders of this group right now. All right. Hey, Marisa, yes. A question on the heavy veneers long as you have in Oregon. How fun is it to watch an athlete in the men's team like Edward Chesarek, you know, going out? He's going to run for the only time here in Eugene yeah. this season. We'll see him on Friday. Just, you know, talk about what it's like seeing him do this thing. Ed is Ed's something else. I think uh, what really strikes us as a coaching staff about Ed is he's really humble and he connects to this place and I think he really does he thrives on the community involvement and he thrives on the fact that people will come and watch him run and he loves that so whether it's a small meet or an NCAA championship the fact that he can he can connect with fans and he can meet kids and he can really like be a part of what's happening in the community is it's really important to him and I think you'll uh, you know if you, if you have an opportunity to spend some time with Ed take some time he's just he's a remarkable kid and uh, he's just really enjoyable and he's fun. So I think it'll be a, a good opportunity for Eugene to come out and see Ed and, and watch him do his thing. Can his success on the men's team just translate out to the women's team? I mean, is it something that's a, it's a team-wide you know, appreciation of, of what he does? Oh, absolutely. I think it, it's, it'd be difficult not to, for anyone not to understand how, how impressive Ed is. Um, but not, not even in just the sense that he's run fast, but I think the way he pours himself into the team is, is what's most impressive about Ed. He will, the kid bleeds green and yellow, and he's, he's, he's really a team player, and he's fantastically talented, as we've all seen, and he's very, very disciplined, and his work ethic is off the charts, but he really wants, he wants the team to be as good as he wants Ed to be. All right. Sure.